can't just appear and raise my hand and say, my daughter and I are here in this little town and we would like you all to cooperate and get to be friends with us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I always, as a journalist, Jack will sort of speak to this too, as a journalist, you always need to go in to a place where you are, want to build trust with someone who has trust already. You want to take their trust and have it be part of what you then own going in. And so I asked a, a woman reporter who I know in Beijing, and I actually you know, paid her to go down for five days to the girls' rural villages in March. We were going in August. And her job was to find girls who would want to spend time with our girls, to explain to them you know, who they were, what they were coming to do, and to end up you know, kind of buying into this idea that they would want to sort of host them and become friends with them. And that worked beautifully. But in addition to that, we found a woman elder in each town. In Maya's uh, town, it was the middle school English teacher who really became a great friend of ours. And she was a woman of enormous trust. She had grown up in the town. She was now a very respected no, she, you know, teacher in the town. And so it turns out her daughter became one of the featured people in this video, or in this, in this book, who is now, by the way, rural. China girl. She is now a rising sophomore at Syracuse University. Ah. <laughs> okay? So, you know, but not all things work that well. Another character, Chen Chen, who was another friend of Maya's, is washing dishes in a restaurant uh, nearby and living in a dormitory with, I think, 12 other kids in a room because she did not pass the test that got her into the exam high school. So we have a lot of different situations that these girls are going through. So our book is going to really open up that window to this variation that's happened over these 20 years. So the answer is, I went in with a journalist who was Chinese, and um, she sort of set the path for me and established everything. And then we had what we would call in the journalism business a fixer with us. We had a woman who was Chinese who was very used to doing work and helping people to negotiate their way around China. Without those people, we not, would not have been able to do this. And then there's Katie, who's sitting back here, who is a uh, local uh, psychologist who works in Newton. And she really helped to work with Maya and Jenny to help them to ask their questions that they needed to ask before they went over. So they were also ready to have this experience. So there was a lot of preparation that went into going. But I think only through the preparation do you get the other side. You know, does it work as well? Um, so that's that answer. Let me just show you the book. I'm not going to, you know, because everyone wants to visit with each other and the rest. So let me just do this, um, give you a little idea of what it looks like. Um, because here, we're finding very few people have actually used I. However, Julie Craven, you would say, would you not, that your students, when they like saw that. it, they, like that. The yeah. digital natives get it. <laughs> <laughs> I gave the same book to a 70-year-old friend of mine. And you know what he said? He said, you know what? He said, I loved it. He said, but I read the text all the way through before I opened up one video. But you know what? You can do it however you want. It's an interactive experience that's driven by the user. You can dig as deep as you want, or you can go as shallow as you want. We're going to do, Julie and I are talking now about how we're going to do the informational graphics looking at the one-child policy. Because I don't want to spend 18 paragraphs explaining what happens and all the ifs, ands, and buts. But if we give people the option to go as deep as they want or as shallow as they want through an informational graphic, then you do it for everyone. And you don't bore <coughs> these people and you don't not give enough to the other people. So. This is the emerging media of our future, everyone. <laughs> so that's what we're building to. And so let me just give you a sense. So we've made the chapter um, complimentary free on the iBook store. And so if anyone has an iPad or a, or a Mac computer, you can download the app for iBooks, which is also free, very quick. You download this, it's also free. And once you've spent some time downloading, it takes about five or eight minutes because of the video instantly loads, and you then have the option to go through it. I'm just going to play you and show you just some of the elements. Here is the scene where Maya writes a little bit about of combing her hair and getting... Here we go. <laughs> Uh, 
here they were in China. Maya can perhaps better say this than I can, but you know, they were for the first time they were surrounded by people who looked like them, and yet in many ways they felt more foreign than they'd ever felt before. So this was Maya's attempt. Jenny had only studied French. She'd never studied Chinese. So Maya thought it would be a good idea to teach her how to say, I am an American <laughs> in Chinese, just in case, you know, anyone wonder. But then Maya went and took this idea for a spin, spin ride of her own in a little uh, ice cream shop. <laughs> I live in Boston with my American mother. I mean, this is all just going just so quickly. In, I mean, they, they just don't absorb it. And um, and then in the end, the woman, um, the young woman says, well, are you going to go back after a few days? <laughs> and it's really fast. And Maya's only been in China now for two days. And she doesn't quite pick it up. So she says, what? <laughs> and so the woman repeats it again. And then she just gives up. Yeah. <laughs> she just gives up. But, you know, as I... As I write, as I write here, you know, I just want to share with you because you know the story that I'm telling here is amplified by the video, but not, you know, absolutely told. It says, you know, Maya and Jenny came back and reported. They said we'd say we're from America, and they'd be giving us looks like, well, what are you trying to do? Make fun of us or something? I don't think they understood that we're Chinese, but we live in America, or that our parents could be American. Maya chimed in. It's hard to explain and a lot harder without our parents because they give away that we're different in that sense. So again, it's a very different journey than they've had before in their lives. Okay, I'm gonna just run through it. This is what you saw where you can go and take a look at who the bios and understand which of the girls have done what. It's a very simple biography. This was again Julie's idea. Thank you, Julie. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the girls? I can, if you're interested. This is Mong Ping, who is going to become Diana, has become Diana, and is looking for a job at the golf course. Um, she um, she grew up in Maya's town. Her father worked, moved away to work as a landscape gardener. Her mother quit her job at that point from working on the farm to really take care of her. Her mother had worked in a factory before that. She did well enough on her Gaokao score to be able to go to one of the uh, better schools, high-ranking universities in Changzhou. She began by majoring in J Japanese, and she switched to English. And now she wants to give her life over to golf. <laughs> so, there you are. Um, this is um, Zhu Piao. Oh, I'm sorry. This is um, Zhu Piao, who is the daughter of the um, middle school teacher in what would have been Maya's um, town, Maya would have had her mother as her middle school English teacher. Um, her father moved away, and this is often the case, moved away, worked as a chemist in a factory. He, he was college educated. And so they are very fairly well off. Um, the mother uh, lives with the mother-in-law while she teaches in the school, in the middle school. And at ninth grade, um, Tiara, as she calls herself, decided that she wanted to go to school in America. So she moved back to Changzhou, went to the school there. She had to then go and live for six months in Suzhou and study for six months to pass the TOEFL, which is the English test. And then she didn't take the Gaokao, she took the SAT. And she applied for a number of schools. So she's very much in the current trend of a lot of students now from China who are making the decision not to go to school there and to try to go to American universities. Um, Chen Chen. Chen Chen's grandparents, uh, she was raised by them since she was seven when her parents divorced. At that point, her father, who's a pig farmer, moved away. He remarried, and he seldom visits, and her mother has vanished from her life. She's had no contact, no letters, nothing from her mother since then. She loves music. She loves to sing. You might have heard in that brief video that there was some music in the background. You think, what the hell is Michael Jackson doing? In, excuse me, hell. Is Michael Jackson doing in you know Shashi, uh, China? Well, she runs. She has her phone on all the time with Western music, and it just happened when that scene was going on that Michael Jackson was singing "We Are the World." Now we could not arrange that. <laughs> so. Um, 
but Chen Chen um, did not pass the exams necessary to get into a high school that she could even be able to take the Gaokao exam. So she now, after high school, she's in a training school, which means she's living in a huge dormitory, and she's waiting tables and washing dishes. And that's likely what she'll probably do from now on. Um, you know, I can go through a couple of others, but you know, you're welcome to kind of look at this afterwards on your own and kind of find out about some of the others. So we just have the um, other videos here. This just gives you a little sense of it. I want to show you Jenny and her mother the first day they went out to her village and meeting Jinshan, who was the girl who became really, I think, her closest and dearest friend there. By the way, they, they text back and forth all the time, still to this day. Um, and Jinshan constantly sends me photographs of her and you know, writes me, et cetera. But, um, so I'll do that, and then we'll um, take a couple questions. It's a little break. scary, because I guess that I've always had a picture in my mind about what my life may have been like, and I think seeing the town will make that picture change. very young. I was abandoned here and I was found at the police station here in um, Shishashu and there's a picture of me at the orphanage. I was there for about nine months and then my mom came and she adopted me because she wanted my sister to have a sister and then I've lived there ever since and I've come back to rediscover the culture and learn more about you and your friends and what it's like to grow up here and like what your life is like and especially because you're a girl and girls have different experiences sometimes. Hello, uh, my name is Jing Shan. This is my room. Now this is summer holiday. Mm, I very welcome you I very welcome Janice to my home and so I feel very, very happy. You want to go to the farm? I can take you to um, experience the farm works. Um, that's that's very hard, but I can teach you how to do it. Bye bye. Just to catch you up a little bit on Jinshan's life, she also represents a very characteristic um, experience of girls or children in China. At seven months, her mother left her to join her father in northern China, and they left her to be raised by her grandparents or the farmers. That's why she constantly talks about, I can take you to the farm. Her parents did not return to raise her until she was nine years old. So they missed nine years of her life. And I'd have to say they probably have never caught up. She's very, very close with her grandparents. And 